In this segment, we're gonna to return to the idea of few shot prompting, and we're gonna look at, specifically for this kind of in-context learning, what properties of examples are needed to make few shot prompting work well. So the basic idea is that we are going to take existing XY pairs labeled training examples and verbalize them in order to form an input to a system like GPT-3. And what you do then is you feed in a number of examples uh, of your task, for example, review colon a review, sentiment colon the sentiment, and then you end with a, an unlabeled example or X test. So we just show in this case review blank and then sentiment and the model's kind of teed up to give us a sentiment judgment. And ideally if we generate now, the model will generate positive. Now compared to zero shot prompting, the model has seen these examples in the context and so it's typically a little bit more likely to follow the pattern and it, you have fewer problems with it sort of deviating from the label space that you've given it. It also tends to work better than zero shot uh, prompting and we'll uh, discuss some comparisons of that in a little bit. So generally this seems great and it's a very convenient way to give a small number of training examples and get an output from a model. However, there's still some things that we need to think about, particularly when providing such a small training set. So here is a uh, training set that I've kind of cooked up for sentiment analysis that I think is gonna be great. It's got more examples than we had on the previous slide. Uh, we've got uh, a bunch of reviews and sentiment judgments, and now we're gonna predict a new sentiment. I'm gonna give you a second to look at this and decide if you think this might work well or might not work well. So it turns out this won't work well and the model will predict positive here. And why does it predict positive? Because all of the examples I gave were positive sentiment. Now you might think, okay, well that was pretty dumb of you, like just don't do that. Um, but it turns out that actually getting the right set of examples can be subtle in a lot more ways than just this one. So uh, in particular, if we take random sets of training examples, we can look at the variance in classification performance. And uh, in this graph here, we see that when you're at four examples, the model can vary between 50 and 70% accuracy if you're just using raw GPT-3 and trying to get classification decisions out of it. Um, now I will caveat that this is with raw GPT-3 and when you start using instruction tuned models, this variance reduces dramatically. However, it still shows that the examples that you give actually are pretty important uh, and do kind of govern the task performance a lot. Uh, the Moreover, they, it doesn't just impact things what examples you have, but actually the order of these examples can uh, impact things a lot. So uh, we have here 10 different training sets. Uh, this is from work from Zhao et al. Uh, where they took permutations of the data points within those training sets and found that accuracy even within the same training set or you know, in context examples could range between 50% and 90% depending on the ordering that you give. Now, why, why is that? Why does like the ordering of these examples matter so much? Well, one of the things they found was that the models have this kind of high positional bias based on the order of the examples that you give them. And so if you do things like give a negative example and then three positive examples, the model's really gonna be likely to think that the next example is positive as well. Whereas if you go like, you know, positive, positive, negative, positive, it's a little bit more balanced. And what they're looking at here is the probability of a label given just a null input, like how, how much is the model sort of biased towards one of these or the other. Um, and what they do ultimately is they use that to calibrate the decisions that the model gives. So they look at that uh, probability on a null input and then compare when you actually give a real input, is that higher or lower than that probability on the null? So, all right, we've seen basically you can give different numbers of examples. How well does this work on more modern models and how much does the number of examples matter? So uh, this is from a paper called Helm uh, from the Stanford Center for Foundation Models led by Percy Liang et al. And uh, the 
results here are kind of surprising. I mean, they're using a lot of, you know, stronger language models, and they do find that in that few shot prompting helps a lot. You can see that most of these models, each line is a different model, goes up dramatically when you go from zero examples to one example. So one example seems to really help. And then beyond that, actually, subsequent examples don't give as much benefit as we might have thought. And this might be, uh, you know, the nature of this particular task, which is a question answering task. Um, you know, maybe all you need to do is show that the model, show the model, hey, you're doing question answering, and actually showing more examples of question answering is not really helpful because the content of those questions isn't meaningful. We can look at this for other tasks as well, like uh, sentiment classification and this kind of civil comments um, toxicity classification data set. We actually see the same story here where showing one example seems to have big benefits in terms of uh, kind of getting the model into the right space to make predictions on this task, but it does not lead to, we don't see much benefit when we increase the number of examples further. So one other result in this vein is due to say one minute at all, and uh, it they studied how necessary is it to even have uh, the demonstrations, or what's the role of the kind of label in the demonstration. And the somewhat surprising thing was that uh, if you replace the gold label, which is what's shown in the gold bar here with a random label, like you just mislabeled the example. You say, you know, here's the review sentiment positive, and then you flip that to negative randomly. They find that actually the performance is almost the same. And basically what this kind of indicates is that the model is seeing this format of, okay, I get, I've got a review, I need to predict a sentiment, you're showing me examples of that. And that's important to surface the right kind of behavior from the model, but it's not really teaching the model the semantics of that sentiment label. Instead, the sentiment labels, uh, semantics are largely imparted by the pre-training process. Uh, so they look at, you know, the percentage of correct labels in uh, the demonstrations, and they do find that it is better to have correct labels. So there's a small benefit from it, but it's much less than, you know, let's say if you took a traditional machine learning model and you flipped half the labels to be incorrect, the model would just completely melt down and, and not do well at all, probably not even converge. So this is a sort of interesting result that shows that even though few shot learning is powerful, it's not always doing what we think it's doing, and it's certainly not learning from the examples in a kind of traditional manner. That's the end of this segment.